Hi everyone, this is Amber again, and I am going to teach you in this video how to paint a cute and cuddly sloth. Isn't he adorable? So to get started with painting our sloth, we wanna make sure we have all of our materials ready to go. You can purchase materials from me if you would like. Um, I have canvas boards, paint, brushes, whatever you need to get the job done. But if you have materials at home, please feel free to use your own. Um, you can use anything from paper to wood to canvas boards like what I'm painting on, whatever materials you have at home. Um, there's no need to buy more if you have supplies. Another thing I really like to stress is reusing or recycling what we have. Um, for example, this canvas board, as you can see, has a very faint outline of a house on it. It was actually from my gingerbread paint class back in December, but it was an extra canvas I had drawn on that didn't get used. So what I did was I erased what I could of those pencil lines, and now I'm gonna draw over top of it. Once I have my sloth painted on there, you won't even be able to notice that there was a gingerbread house at one point in time. So this is a great example of reusing what you have. And then we also wanna make sure we have some brushes. We wanna have a fine point brush for those small areas and the details of our painting. And then a medium, whatever your preference is. Something to cover a larger area. If you're painting at home with your own supplies and you have like a really large canvas like this, obviously you're gonna want a little bit bigger of a brush so it doesn't take you ages to cover and paint. So you want something a little bit bigger. So again, whatever materials you have and whatever your preference is for brush size. You also wanna make sure you have a plate to put your paint on. If you don't have plates, you can use a yogurt cup lid. Um, you can use a regular plate and just wash it off afterwards, throw it in the dishwasher after you've washed it. You wanna have a paper towel to wash your brushes off in between painting. And then you also wanna have a cup of water so we have something to wash our paint out of the brush. For this tutorial, I'll be using acrylic paints. Um, I really like this brand called Cheap. It's from Craft Warehouse. And it's affordable, it's not gonna break the bank, and it's good quality. So it spreads onto your canvas nicely and has a nice um, finished product in the end. So acrylic paints, if you're following along step-by-step step with what I'm doing, but you can always do watercolors. Um, you could just have your kids color with crayons, markers, color pencils, whatever you have at home. I also like to cover my surface so that way it's a nice easy cleanup when I'm done painting. I don't have to worry about scrubbing anything off the table. But if you don't have a tablecloth, um, you can always use a trash bag, you can use an old t-shirt, or you could just paint on the table and wash it off afterwards. No hurt, no, or, no harm in that. <laughs> so let's get started. What we're going to do first is draw our sloth. So this is what our finished drawing is going to look like. You can purchase an outlined canvas of your sloth from me if you do not want to draw it yourself. Or if you have a blank canvas or want to purchase a blank canvas, you can do that and you can follow along on how to draw it yourself. So this is what it finished looks like. One thing I really want to stress about drawing is to approach it from a different angle. This, I realize, maybe is a little more intimidating or overwhelming compared to the ice cream cone that we just drew, but still definitely achievable. Even if you feel you're not the best drawer in the world, I don't even know if drawer is a word, if you don't feel your drawing skills are um, you know, at the level you want them to be, we can still get this final outcome. The biggest tip to keep in mind when drawing is to not look at it as a sloth, but to break out each element, each component of the drawing into basic, simple shapes that you're comfortable with and that you know really well. For example, his face is an oval, or his claws are triangles, or if you want to look at like the branch here, kind of looks like a snake shape. If you're comfortable drawing snakes, but you're not comfortable drawing tree branches, Look at it from that point of view. So anytime we're drawing, we wanna break down each element of our drawing into basic shapes that we know we can draw. This will help you feel more comfortable and at ease as you're drawing. So to get started, we're going to draw this branch here. And we're first just going to draw a nice arched line going from 
the left side of our canvas to the right side of our canvas. When you're drawing, you want to make sure you're drawing with real nice light lines. So that way if you mess up, it's easy to erase. And when we paint, we don't have to worry about covering our pencil lines with too much paint. So just a nice arch line going from one side of the canvas to the other. And then we're going to draw another arch line right above that, but you wanna make sure that this side of your branch is a little bit thicker than this side. So you can see how it starts thick and then it gets smaller as you're going outwards. So that way it looks more like a branch and not just a tube or a rectangle. So just following that same shape that you just drew with the left side being thicker than the right, you wanna draw and slowly come inwards so that way it's fatter on one side, thinner on the other. So just a nice arch line. Kinda of looks like it's part of a rainbow or a thick hair that's zoomed in on, part of a snake, whatever. You have to tell yourself that shape is so that way it's easy in your mind to put it on your canvas. The next piece we're going to add is this part of the branch where it branches off from the main stem. And this kind of looks like a triangle shape. So we're just gonna do that. We're gonna draw a nice triangle that's curved in. Kind of looks like a shark fin. So you can look at it that way as well. And don't worry about, as we're drawing lines that shouldn't be there, like this line, for example, we'll go through and we'll erase all of those in the end. We just wanna make sure we get the basic shapes down for our painting. Okay, so now we have our branch. We can go ahead and add our leaves up here. And these are just nice oval shapes, but ovals that are pointed on each end. See that how they're pointed and not so round? I only have two, but you're more than welcome to add more if you want. If you're going to add more than just these two here, like if you're wanting to add some down here or closer to the sloth, I would wait to add those until your sloth is drawn. That way you can place them and not make them too big or cover up any part of the sloth that you wanna see. So for now, we're just drawing these two right here and they're nice pointed ovals. So one on each side of the branch. And you can draw one a little bigger than the other or a little fatter than the other, whatever you wanna do. So nice leaves right here. The next step to our sloth drawing is drawing this basic oval circle for his head. It's important as you're drawing this to draw it nice and large. If you draw it too small itty bitty here in your canvas, your sloth in comparison to the size of your branch is gonna look awkward. So you wanna make sure that you're still drawing nice and large. Not too big that the head is overpowering, but a nice oval sized head. So we're gonna get our oval on our canvas. Just like this. And you can see my oval is kind of tilted. So that way it looks like he's appearing to hang there. So just a nice oval shape right there. You can kind of see how large it is compared to the branch. And as I drew the oval, I kind of tilted my canvas a little. So it wasn't straight on, it was tilted so I could get that shape in the position of the sloth's body. Remember, even if you make a mistake, you can easily erase it. Just make sure you're drawing with a real light hand. The next shape we wanna draw is kind of like a heart slash oval. So it's this white part of his face, the inner part. And I say heart slash oval because the top here is shaped like a heart, how the lines curve in together. But the bottom is not pointed like a heart. The bottom just follows that same oval curve to go with the outside oval that we just drew. So you wanna start by drawing a heart here towards the top of his face, inside the oval you just drew, 
and then make sure it rounds out and follows that same oval shape that you just drew. So, to put that on canvas and show you, here is the start of that inner shaped face. Kind of looks like a bird or a bat or a really loose M. That's the top of that shape. And then we're just going to follow the shape of that oval inside of it to get the rest of his face shape. You can see I turn my canvas a lot as I draw versus dragging my pencil around, but it's whatever your preference is. So there's that inner white part of his face. So you should have a large oval for his shape of his head and then this inner heart slash oval shape to get the white portion of his face. The next thing we're gonna draw are these dark gray parts of his eyes. And if you turn it this way, it just looks like a teardrop shape. Or you can look at it as a leaf shape. So we're just going to draw two of those now for his eyes. If it helps you, instead of drawing so it's straight with you, you can turn this, turn it however you want to draw those ovals on there, or ovals, I'm sorry, teardrops. <laughs> so here is one teardrop or leaf shape. Remember, we're breaking down each part of his body into basic shapes so that way it's not so overwhelming as we draw it. Once you have one on, then you want to get your other teardrop on for his second eye. You want to get them as close to size as you can. You can tell this one's a little bit smaller than this one. So I can either reduce the size of this or enlarge this teardrop, whatever you're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you want to try and have it somewhat symmetrical. So I'm going to reduce the size of this other one just so they look a little more identical in shape. You can see my pencil line that I first drew was a little dark, but I'm not gonna stress too much because I can cover it with paint. You just wanna try and draw as light as you can so that way it's not so much paint to have to use to cover up those lines. The next feature of his face is his nose here. And this is kind of like a triangle shape, but instead of having real sharp pointy edges, pointy um, tips, we're gonna round those out. So start with a triangle shape and you wanna make it a nice large nose. So we're gonna start with a triangle and then we're gonna go back in and we're going to round the edges out. See how that's a little more round than a pointy triangle? And that is for his nose. Not too bad, huh? All right, so now we have his face drawn. We are not going to draw the line for his mouth and the dots in his nose and eyes because those are pretty easy and since they're so small, um, it's one more thing you'd have to paint around, which can kind of be a pain when you're painting around small details. So we'll go ahead and we'll just paint those in once we're at that point. So for now, we're just going to stick with just the basic outlines of our sloth. What we're going to draw now is his back here. So this is just a nice curved arch line going from the bottom of his head, his chin right here, all the way down to the bottom of his canvas. So on here, in my painting, I have his body hanging off of the canvas and then swooping back in here. So there's just a little peekaboo of the background. You can draw it like that, or if you want his whole back showing and have more background, you can do that. Just depends on how chunky you want to paint your sloth. So we're going to draw that arch of his back going from the bottom of his face to the bottom of our canvas, just like that, this line here. And then we want to make sure that he comes back up. So I am going to finish 
this line, pretending like it's going all the way down and back up. So you have just a little peekaboo of the background right here. Next thing we want to draw is this line for his belly. So this is the top of his belly, finishing off the shape of his, his whole body there. So you're going to go from the bottom of his face, his chin, and an arched line again. You're going to draw bottom of his face all the way to the corner. That's going to give the shape of his body here. Now, so our, when we paint our sloth, we don't want him to look too flat looking and be one color. So we're going to draw a second line following the arch of his back. And this is gonna be where we paint our dark gray just to give him some dimension when we paint him. So following that same line that you drew for his back, you're going to draw another one about finger width. Just carry it to the bottom. All right, now our sloth needs some arms. So we're gonna focus on this arm here that's in the foreground, in the front, that covers the front of the branch. So see how this one is in front of the branch? This arm is behind the branch. So again, this is just a simple arched line, part of a circle, part of an oval, part of a moon, however you wanna look at it. And then you have another one that's a little bit shorter, still goes to the edge of his belly here, but doesn't go down as far. So we're going to start at the top of our branch, where am I at? right here, and we're gonna work our way down. So starting at the top of the branch and keeping it arched or curved, top of the branch, curved down to his belly. And then on the other side, kind of how we drew this tree branch where it was fatter on one end, thinner on the other, you want to do slightly the same but not as drastic or dramatic. So you want to start here at the top and work your way outwards. So the top of his arm is going to be smaller than the base here. See how that's wider, it's fatter. So start at the top of the branch, bring your line down to the belly, smaller, fatter. Remember, don't worry about these lines that are crossing because we'll erase those in a little bit. For the top of his hand here on the tree, it kind of looks like it's cut off. It shouldn't be even with the branch, otherwise it just looks funny. It doesn't look realistic. So you want to draw a slight arch going from one line to the other, just to give it a little bit of curve there. So it appears like his hand is wrapping around the branch. All right, now we need to add this little curved line for his belly to give that white look, that white spot, white patch. So from one side of the canvas to the arm line, just a nice curved, simple line. That's going to be the white part of his belly. And the last thing we need to add is this arm that's in the back that wraps behind the tree branch. So again, just those simple curved lines that we've been drawing. You're going to draw one going from the bottom of the branch to the top line of his belly to the side of his face here. So the bottom of the branch to the top line of this belly that we drew, but off to the side of his face. So it shouldn't be touching his face. It shouldn't be crossing into his face. It's to the side. This is the arm behind the branch. And then we need to draw a smaller line going from the bottom of the branch to the top of his head. So bottom of the branch to the top of his head. And still keeping that same effect where it's smaller towards the top and gets wider towards the base of his arm that connects to the body. So see how this is going outwards and it gives that illusion that it's wider here 
even though it's behind the head and we can't see it, it still appears wider. Now, at the top of the branch where we want his claws to be kind of peeking over the branch here, what we're going to do is imagine that this line is drawn all the way through. And if you want to draw it all the way through, you most certainly can. Just draw it real nice and light, and then you can always erase it when we're done, if that helps you. But at the top there, where the line would connect, you're going to draw just an arch. And it's going to be a little bit bigger than what you drew over here. And then we're going to draw three triangles. These are his claws. Three triangles, just like that. Now, these claws are not perfectly pointy, straight edge triangles, but they resemble the shape of a triangle. So if we start off by drawing triangles like I did here, then we can go back and we can curve those lines so that way they're more rounded. Remember, break it down into simple shapes and then you can tweak it afterwards. But this helps you feel a little more comfortable drawing it because we all know how to draw a triangle, right? So see how I just went through and I just curved those edges a little bit, a little more? That way they weren't so pointy. All right. So now what we're going to do, since we have all of our elements drawn, we're gonna go through and erase all of the unnecessary lines. So this line of the tree should not be crossing over the arm. And we shouldn't have a line here because this arm is behind the tree. So we just wanna make sure we erase all of those unnecessary lines. That way when we paint, we know exactly what we're painting and we don't get confused. there, a couple in our leaf, where we added that triangle or fin shape to our tree branch. All right, so drawn sloth. This is a little bit cleaner canvas I didn't draw on to begin with. Remember I had my gingerbread house on here originally so you can still kind of see some of those lines but I didn't want to waste this canvas so I'm reusing it so this one's a little bit cleaner for you to see so this line here where the tree is behind it I erased that line so I can't see it while I'm painting same with over here there was a line there when we first drew our tree branch I erased it so that way I knew this is all going to be brown so this is what our finished drawing should somewhat resemble. Yours may be a little different and that's totally fine, but here is what our sloth looks like. All right, so now that we're all done drawing, we're gonna set aside our pencil because we don't need that anymore. And we are going to paint first our background. I like to do the background first um, because these smaller areas if you accidentally get paint over top of your sloth, um, it's easier, I think, to clean that line up afterwards, but really you could do it either way. It's just my preference to start with the background. So that's what we're going to do for this tutorial. I am using for my background this nice, pretty turquoise color. It's one of my favorites. So I have a squirt of turquoise on my plate, and I'm going to add a couple drops of water to my paint. This is going to help thin the consistency of your paint so that way it spreads onto your canvas a little easier, a little nicer. When we're painting with acrylics, we wanna always make sure that we have a little bit of water in our brush, not too much. Um, we don't wanna make a mess. We don't wanna have uh, puddles of paint that take forever to dry, but just enough to thin it up a little bit. So I have this nice pretty turquoise color and I'm coloring, or I'm coloring, yes. I'm painting just a solid turquoise color in my background. If you wanna get wild and funky with this, you're more than welcome to. If you wanna add some polka dots, some stripes, maybe some 
swooshes to make it look breezy, whatever you wanna do, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to paint a nice solid color for my background though. And you can start anywhere in the background you want to. Make sure you're painting around your drawing lines. So just like we practice coloring in the lines as kids with our color crayons and our coloring books, you wanna do the same with your painting. So I'm painting around the edge of my branch and his arm. And because we're using a canvas board, there's a little bit of depth. So this edge here, unless you want it to be white, you wanna make sure that you paint the edges as well. So that way it looks like our background is wrapping our entire canvas. So go ahead and paint your entire background. And once we're done with that, we will move on to the sloth. Okay, so we have finished painting all of our background. Make sure when you paint your background, you don't miss these little spots here. Sometimes when we have a lot of pencil lines, it's easy to get confused on what is what. So this spot, this spot, this little corner here, that is all background color. So that should be your finished background. Next, we're going to move on to our tree branch. And you can see in my branch, I have a few different shades of brown. So I have just this medium brown, that's the base coat of our branch. But towards the bottom here, I have a deeper brown for some shadows. And then I threw in some white along the top for highlights. So we are going to paint our branch next. And what we wanna do is have some white and some brown on our plate. And first we're going to mix that medium color brown just for the solid base coat of the branch. So you're going to mix brown with your pile of white. Remember, don't do this the opposite way. Don't mix a little bit of white into your brown because it's gonna take more white paint to lighten it versus if you just throw some brown into your white, if you want it to be darker, it's easy enough to throw more brown color in there. We don't wanna waste any of our paint. So you're just gonna mix whatever color branch you want, light, dark, whatever you're filling. So get a nice medium brown for the base coat of your branch. And then we're gonna start painting our branch. Once you have that color, make sure to add a little bit of water. It's kind of like a mocha soft chocolate color. You can see that. All right. Feel free to turn, tilt your canvas however you want so you're comfortable painting. So I'm going to add this dark or this medium brown that I just made for the base coat of my branch. And I'm not worrying, worrying about my shadows or my highlights right now, just the base coat. And remember to throw some paint on the edges of our canvas so they're not white unless you want them to be white. And we're painting inside of our line. So I'm not painting the sloth's arm brown. I'm just painting up to that line. Okay, and you can do this in sections if you want because the best way to get some nice blended colors is to make sure that your paint is wet when you add another color over top of it. So what I mean is you can see here that the dark brown along the bottom, it's not a straight harsh edge like the two grays here. It blends and fades together. So you wanna make sure that your paint color is wet when you do that. So I just painted this little corner of the branch that brown and now I'm going to grab just a touch of my dark original brown from the tube. And I'm gonna brush it right over top of that light brown just in the bottom portion of my branch, just where I want a shadow to be. So just like that. See how the two colors blend together because they're wet? Now if you have a lot of paint on your brush, dry it off, you don't have to wash your brush because we're still using brown but dry it off so that way you get the paint out of your brush. And then you can go along 
the edge of that dark brown and the light brown and with your brush lightly brush over top of it and that's going to help blend the two together without adding more paint on top so it's a more softer transition now you're going to do the same with the white i'm not washing my brush because i'm trying to focus on blending the colors together so i'm just going to grab a dab of white on my brush here and along the top where i want to highlight i'm going to throw or paint some white over top of my brown now this is your preference on how much of a highlight or a shadow you want but just like that so that gives it the appeal the effect that your branch has definition and it's curved just a little bit goes a long way and if you want to give your branch some more depth and texture you can always brush just a smidge of different tones different that white and the dark brown in the middle of your branch just to give it a little bit more texture so see how our branch looks more curved and not as flat anymore that's with the shadow and the highlight that's how you get that effect so go ahead and finish the rest of your branch all the way across and the little extended piece right here and then we'll move on to the next step all right now that you have finished your branch meaning it's all painted brown with your shadows and your highlights and you can tell this branch is a lot lighter than this branch this one's more darker on top so it's your preference as to how you want to paint your branch color either one is totally acceptable whatever you want to do the next thing we're going to paint is these little leaves right here so i'm going to make a light shade of green using just this grass colored green and mixing it with some white again using a little bit of water and this is again your preference on how light or dark you want your leaves to look we can do kind of a minty green or if you want it to be darker in color you can add more green to that whatever you want just want to get a nice leaf color here and in my original painting I actually used a lime green which is very vibrant super cute it goes really well with the turquoise it complements it nicely however I ran out of lime green and don't really feel like driving to Boise to buy some more so I'm gonna make my own different shade of green that will still complement the turquoise really well so once you have the color uh, shade of green that you want I'm just gonna go ahead and paint your leaves I'm gonna switch to my fine tip brush um, be a little easier to control in those tighter angles those tighter spots I'm just gonna paint both of them completely green don't worry about any shadows or highlights we just want to get a nice solid color down as our base coat you can see I'm always turning my canvas um, I find it's easier rather than moving my arm and getting my arm in my paint and smearing it across my canvas so I'm always rotating my canvas to make it the easiest on me for painting and then make sure your leaves are covering um, part of your branch. So it looks like they're placed on top of your branch, like they're a part of it. You could have them um, kind of appearing like they're going behind, but mine are just placed right on top. So I've got a nice base coat of green on both of these. nice oval shapes that are pointed at the ends there we go so mine are a little bit deeper in color um, not as contrasting as compared to the sample but still a nice look now you can see here in my sample I have some white for highlights so we're going to do that step next I want to make sure that 
you wash your brush out with the green so that way the white and the green aren't mixing and you want to give that green a second to dry acrylics do dry fairly quick so I shouldn't need too long to dry maybe just a minute or two whatever you're comfortable with and while that's drying I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my white paint here to thin it up so if I make my white a little more um, milky you could say with water this is gonna give it a nice fluid emotion when I paint it on my canvas so rather than having uh, a jagged line when you swoosh or swipe your brush across the canvas um, it's gonna be more fluid and consistent so just add some water so it's a milky consistency not too runny you can kind of see there then using my little brush I'm gonna add a couple highlights on both of my leaves. I'm gonna start with that first leaf I painted because it's gonna be more dry than that second leaf. And I'm not gonna get crazy with my highlights. I'm just gonna have a couple on each one. These can be as fat or as thin as you would like, depending on how much you want them to stick out. Now we're not doing this for a realistic look. Um, you're obviously not going to look at it and say, wow, that's a really realistic leaf. Uh, you're doing it so that way it adds a little bit of depth and doesn't appear flat looking. So it just gives it some dimension. So not a photorealistic leaf, but a fun leaf that you can tell right away it's a leaf. All right. Now that we're done with our leaves and our branch we're going to move on to painting our sloth now in my example i painted a gray sloth but if you want to do um, maybe more of like a beige sloth you're more than welcome to keep in mind if you did a light colored branch you're either going to want to do a darker colored sloth or a very very light colored sloth so that way you can tell the difference between the two and your sloth doesn't get lost hanging there on your branch I'm going to do gray though. Um, I really like the color and how it complements the turquoise really well. And you can tell here I have two different grays. I have a light gray for the majority of his body and then I have this dark gray for his eyes, his back, and his arm. The reason this arm is a dark gray is because you're trying to portray that it's behind the branch so it's more shadowed. If it were light it wouldn't look as uh, as realistic you could say because it would it would uh, comp or it would mimic this one here so we want to make sure it's slightly darker to show that it's behind and not in the front so the way we make gray is with our white paint and since I'm making two different grays I'm gonna put two different piles of white on my plate one slightly a little bit larger of a pile than the other because we're going to need more light gray than we are dark gray. And then black. You want a little bit of black, not a lot, to make your gray. Black is very, very overpowering as far as colors go. So it only takes a little bit of black for making gray or making any color a little bit darker of a shade. If you add too much black, it's just going to look black. So I'm going to dip just the tip of my brush and mix it with one of the piles to make my gray. Again, adding a little bit of water. And I'm gonna grab some more black and mix it with my other pile of white. Remember, I need a darker shade and a lighter shade. You want to make sure that your brush is really clean before you start this so that way you're not mixing any green or brown into your white. So I have two grays there, this one and this one. I want this one to be slightly darker so I'm just going to add a touch more black, just a little bit. Remember you can always add more but it's harder to take it away. I just want it to be a hair darker than what it was. 
so it's a little hard to maybe see in this lighting, but this gray is definitely lighter than this gray here. So you just want two different shades, whether it's grays that you're using, beiges, browns. If any of y'all wanna get really creative and do, let's say, a pink sloth, you could always use some magenta, or if you want a fun, bright, cheery color, you could do a yellow sloth. It doesn't have to be realistic. You can have fun with it and be creative. So whatever color sloth you want to paint, just make sure you have two shades of the color. If you're using like a yellow, I would not recommend mixing black to make a darker shade. You can um, just use yellow and then mix another pile of yellow with white to make a lighter shade. You could also mix a little bit of orange into your yellow and that'll give you kind of like a yellow orange color. There's lots of different things you could do to mix and make your own colors. So for this one, I am using gray and I'm gonna start off with my lighter gray and I'm going to paint the majority of his body here. So everywhere where you see light gray, I'm going to paint first along with the outside part of his face. So not where the white is, but around the white. I'm gonna paint it with my light gray. So go ahead and do that regardless of what color you're painting. Paint his body, his arm that's in the uh, front, and then the outside of his face. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have all of the light gray painted here, which is the majority of his body, that arm, and then around the outside of his face. Before we paint the darker gray, um, I'm gonna paint my white first. And I'm going to do that because we have the white in his face here. And if I accidentally get a little carried away with the black, it's gonna be harder to cover up with the white. So I'm gonna paint the white of his face and the white of his belly real quick. The reason we paint white, even though we're painting on a white canvas, is because when your painting is all said and done, um, there's a little bit of shine to the paint. Uh, and if you leave this just the regular canvas, it's gonna be dull looking, more matte than shiny. So you want a nice, consistent um, overall finish. Also, when we're drawing, I don't know if you can tell, but sometimes we smudge our pencil lines and so it makes the canvas appear dirty. So if we paint with the white, we can cover up any of that. You can really see it like in the arm, it's a little dirty from the lead of the paint, or the lead of the pencil. I'm gonna paint the white real quick on his belly here. Remember to use a little bit of water as well. That'll help their paint spread a little easier. Staying in the lines. If you can see any pencil lines at this point, go ahead and make sure you cover those up. Look on your belly. Making sure you still paint the edges so that way your edges are shiny as well and not dull or have pencil smudge marks. Okay, so the belly is painted white. And then I'm going to paint the inside of his face white as well. up to the edge of that light gray that I just painted. It's gonna help cover any marks that look or appear dirty. Try not to cover your pencil lines on your face too much with your paint so that way you can still see where you need to paint in your dark gray on your face. Unless you're comfortable just eyeballing it. It's nice to have those guides there for where we need to paint. Now if you had a lot of pencil marks, maybe you made a few mistakes and you tried to erase it, but you used a real heavy hand and your lines are dark, you might have to add a couple of coats of white on this step, or if you're using any light color, regardless of where it's at on your canvas, it's on your body, your arms, your hands, whatever. 
So just keep that in mind. If you can still see your pencil lines after you've painted over top of them, let it dry and you can add a second coat of paint. All right, I almost have my face painted here, a nice white coat. Covering up any pencil lines, smudge marks, rounding out my face there. My gray got a little carried away. Make sure you paint around the nose. Kind of a tedious within the face painting around the eyes and the nose which is another reason why we don't paint the little circles for his eyes and his nostrils on because it's more little things you have to paint around okay so now we have his face covered in white and his belly right here as well moving on we're going to wash our brush out with the water Remove any of that white paint we had and dry it off. And now I'm gonna move over to this dark gray that I created. So the dark gray is going to be used for his back here. And this just shows a little bit of dimension so he doesn't look so flat. It doesn't look like you have a big gray blob on there. We're also gonna use the gray for his eyes, his nose, and then this arm that is in the background. So go ahead and paint all of your dark gray and then from there we'll move on and we'll do some of these finishing touches so it looks more like an arm. Right now it just looks like a big gray blob so we'll add some dark gray to make it look like an arm. So first paint your dark grays. Okay now that you have your dark gray done we're going to move on. You can tell in this painting I'm doing with you, my grays are a little more subtle compared to one another. Whereas in this one, in the bottom one, they're more contrasting. So the gray, the dark gray is really dark compared to the light gray and it pops a little more. So this is whatever your preference is, whether you want it more contrasting or you want it more subtle. So we have all of our large gray spots done, our large gray areas. Now we're gonna go through and we're gonna, with that same darker gray, we're gonna add some lines under the face here so it looks like there's some separation between the face and the body and some lines where the arm is as well. Right now it's looking a little flat and it all looks like one. So that's what's gonna help separate the body part so it looks a little more realistic. So we wanna add some darker gray where the arm connects to the body here. And adding just a few lines, a few swooshes going upwards, so that way we have that contrasting look for shadows. Then you wanna do it on the other side of the arm here. Just like that. So we added a dark gray line here and here. So it looks like there's separation of the arm and the body. And then we're adding a line here to separate the head from the body. It's your preference on how much of this dark gray you want to add, but it doesn't take too much to get that point across, but it's two separate body parts. All right, so now we have some separation here. We are going to add the little nostrils in his nose, which are just circles. We're going to use the end of our brush instead of our bristles to make nice dots. And we're using the light gray. So the gray that we use for the majority of his body we're going to use that same color gray to make those nostrils. And it's just two nice dots right there on top of your triangular nose. So just like that. 
The next thing we want to add are two large black circles inside of his eyes here. I'm going to use the bristle end of my brush because those circles are pretty large compared to what the end of this brush is. So I'm going to paint two large black circles inside those teardrop shaped eyes. Start small because you can always make it bigger, but if you make your eye too big, you don't like it. Since we're painting with black, it's going to be harder to cover up. So you always want to start small and you can always increase the size of it. Remember to use a little bit of water to help with your edges being nice and fluid instead of jagged looking. So I have one circle done. I'm going to add another to the other eye on the opposite side. And you kind of want to place them in the same spot. Same spot of the teardrops. Unless you want your sloth to look crazy and funky and weird, you could always put it in a different spot. Make his eyes kind of look wonky. Totally up to you. Okay, so we have two black circles. And to finish it off, we just need to add the pupils there. Again, we can use the opposite end of our brush, our non-bristle side, and just dip it in some white. And then dot right over top of the black. So we have some pupils. The last thing we need to add to his face is his mouth. And it's just a nice, simple, curved, small, thin line. Remember, start small. You can always make his mouth bigger, but it's gonna be really hard to make it smaller if it's too large, especially since we're using black. So I wet my black quite a bit with water, so that way it's very liquidy. And I'm using my fine tip brush. And I'm gonna paint just a simple, thin arch line right under his nose. Pretty simple and small. The last thing we're going to do with our black paint is paint his little claws up here. Those three triangles that we painted or we drew in the beginning. You're going to paint each one of those black. Just using that black paint still and our fine tip brush since these, this is a smaller area we're going to paint those black I really like the fine tip brushes because it gives you more control then you don't get too carried away with some wild thick lines One more nail here or claw. I want to make sure too that your claws are touching so there's no gaps in between them, otherwise, it looks a little funky or out of place, like they don't belong. last thing I'm going to do for the body of my sloth is add just a couple highlights. So my original painting I have a highlight here on his back, I have one up here on the top paw just to again give it a little bit of dimension. So using my small fine tip brush and my white paint, I'm going to paint a few strokes of white. So there's one there on the top of the paw, a couple on the back here. Got a little water drop on my canvas, just gonna wipe that off. Now the only other thing that I did differently on my sloth was I gave him a little mohawk hairdo right here. 
You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just leave his head nice and round like this. But if you want to give him his hairdo, we can add that real quick. You're just going to use that light gray that you originally used for the majority of his body. And starting at the top of his head here, you're going to use your brush and just kind of swoosh outwards. So it looks like he's got some strands of hair coming off the top. You want to do a few short hairs, a few longer hairs, nothing too symmetrical, just a couple there. That just gives it the appearance that he's hairy, maybe gives him a little personality, just makes him a little more fun looking. So you decide here how much hair you want to add to the top of his head. And then just to outline it so it's a little easier to look at, a little easier to see, I'm gonna use just a couple strokes of black. Just real nice, fine, nothing too crazy. That way it's just a little easier to, to see there on his body. All right, that is our finished sloth painting. So if you'd like to share what you created, um, go ahead and leave a comment uh, in the message feed below the video. I'd love to see how your sloth turned out. If you have any questions while you're painting, again, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks guys.